Hello and welcome to the part 4 of the macOS app development tutorial series. So if you guys have been following along, you might notice that our navigation primary view currently looks like this. Now let's continue and make some more views for our macOS application. So I'll start by making a new folder in the Mac Landmarks folder. And I'll call this supporting views. And inside our supporting views folder, we'll just add a new file. So you can open up the, the file that you had downloaded from the first part of this video. If you guys haven't downloaded this, I'll link this in the description of this video as well. So you can go ahead and download it. And in this folder, just open up landmarks folder and the supporting views folder. And from here, we'll just click and drag the circle image Swift file and put it inside our project supporting views. And make sure that copy item if needed is checked and click finish. So here let's open up our circle image also file and I'll just hit resume here and I'll just modify the structure to take a new parameter which is shadow radius. This is a CG float value and I'll set it to 10. And down here in the shadow modifier I can just add the radius as shadow radius. So in our supporting views folder we'll add another file from the same folder that we had downloaded. Just pick up mapview.swift file and drag it inside our supporting views file. Make sure copy items if needed is checked and click finish. Now you may see that uh, Xcode is reporting many errors here because uh, the map view file uses UI view representable which is not available in the Mac OS SDK. This is a protocol which is available in the iOS SDK. So in the next few steps, we'll just extend this view to use NSView representable when it's appropriate. So next, I'll just insert a compiled derivative that creates regions of platform specific behavior. So down here, I'll add the compiled derivatives. Now I'll just move the UI view representable conformance which consists of make UI view and update UI view methods into an extension in the appropriate compiled derivative branch without relocating the actual mapkit interactions. So here in the else part, I'll just add the extension. I'll just add both of these functions in this extension and we can delete the conformance of UIV representable here and here we can just wrap this function as a map view and inside these function I'll just add these functions that we have created which will work in the Mac OS SDK. So Xcode will still report an error because we have used the undeclared context here. So we will fix this by adding NSView representable conformance in the next steps. In the Mac OS if case, I'll just make another extension and uh, here we'll just conform to the NSView representable. I'll change this view to MK map view. And we'll add another update function. And here we can just mention that this is a MK map view. Okay, so now it's not showing any errors. Okay, so next let's make a detailed view for our landmarks. The detailed view displays the information about the selected landmark. So we'll just add a new Swift UI view to our project and uh, let's call this navigation detail.
and we'll give it the landmark property and we'll add that to the preview provider as well now let's create a scroll view that contains a vertical stack which in turn holds a horizontal stack that displays a circle image and text about the landmark so i'll get rid of this and create a scroll view here and inside the scroll view we'll make a v stack i'll set its alignment to leading and it's facing to 12 and uh, inside that we can just add a horizontal stack which is center aligned and inside our stack we can just add the circle image that we just worked on and we can just set a sample image and along with this let's add a v stack which will give us some of some information about the landmark so i'll just add a few text elements here And I'll just add a maximum width for the vertical stack so in this way we'll ensure that all its contents remain at a width that's comfortable to read okay so let's check out our preview for this right so this looks good for now so I think uh, this image is uh, quite big and uh, it's not matching the text that we have written so let me set a constant size for the image and i'll add the resizable property to the image right so i think now it's looking good and we can also set the shadow of our image so next up I'll add a user data as an environment object and create an index into the stored landmark based on the currently selected landmark and we'll add this to the preview provider as well And let's create a landmark index variable here great so let's add a button which is aligned horizontally with the landmark name and uh, using the same star image from the row view and with an action that toggles the landmarks is favorite property so right after the landmark name i'll add a new button right so we've added our button let's resume to preview this right so our so our favorite button has been added but uh, i think it it will look better if we align it horizontally so i'll just wrap the landmark name text and the button inside of a horizontal stack
right so now our button has been horizontally aligned with the landmark name now let's add a divider below and we can just add some more information about the landmark right so this looks good now let's just insert a map at the top of this detailed view and offset the other contents upward to slightly overlap so at the top of the vertical stack i'll just add our map view and we'll give it the coordinates of our landmark now the map which occupies the full width of the view pushes the detailed text below the bottom of the preview but it's still there in our application okay now let's import the map kit so let's add a open in maps button which when clicked will redirect the user to open the maps app to that location So let's check the preview for this. Great, and our open in maps button is ready. So I think we can position this open in maps button in an overlay so that it appears on top of the map in a lower right corner. So I'll just add an overlay to our map view. And inside it, we can just add a geometry reader. And we can add our open in maps button inside of this view. Right, so our open in maps button is inside of our map view. Now I'll just offset it so that it's not sticking to the corner. great so this looks good for now so that's it for this video guys and uh, in the next video we will combine the primary and the detailed views and finish our mac os application so thank you so much for watching and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can get notified as soon as i drop the final part of this mac os app development video series thank you